Um, okay, so this is a, a paper with Ali Bagazandi who, who couldn't make it here because, and maybe I should say that, you know, he being Ir Iranian, he cannot uh, get a visa either to France or back to the United States without waiting like two or three months either way. So just so everybody knows what they have to deal with. Okay. Um, so, so what are aggregate signatures? Um, so uh, this is a way to compact uh, uh, signatures when you have a scenario where uh, many people uh, have possibly many messages to sign and uh, they perhaps follow some protocol, some interactive, unfortunately, protocol to get a short message that is an, a functional equivalent of n separate signatures, uh, first guy on first message, second person on the second message, etc. So uh, there is a verification procedure, and instead of having n separate signatures, it takes public keys and messages and a single string and verifies it. And what's the, what's the benefit? Well, signature size uh, becomes uh, compacted. Okay? Uh, there is a very close variant of this called multi-signatures for some reason, where instead of several messages, you have all these messages are the same. And at, uh, with multi-signatures, we also know not only to compact the signature, but also to reduce the verification time uh, to, to uh, you know, constant. Okay, I mean, in principle, maybe you could do this for, for when messages are different, but, but uh, there's no such scheme so far. And uh, some applications of these, uh, you know, they're basically hypothetical for, 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 for now. It's kind of like, a, um, you know, nice protocol problems is kind of looking for, for some applications rather than the other way around. But potentially, um, if you have large number of signers and if for some reason you have some bandwidth or storage constraints, so you want to compact uh, the signatures, and uh, where can it go? Like, well, for example, when you have some acknowledgments to a massive uh, ma uh, broadcast, so it's a single message and everybody signs it. Um, but uh, on the other hand, uh, maybe it's not so easy to think, like, why, 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 why do we have bandwidth constraints if we broadcast things? Well, this is more exotic uh, application, steganography. Uh, if you compact it to your signature, maybe it's easier to hide in some random, uh, you know, among some random image. Uh, and, and a less exotic one, perhaps most, uh, most attractive sensor networks, when, you know, you have a lot of signers and possibly they're kind of cheap and, and, and they, not, not, you know, they try not to use too much bandwidth and, and storage. Okay. Now, why identity-based version of, of the same thing? Well, it's a further reduction of bandwidth. So uh, before, I need, still needed the public keys to verify. And uh, public keys uh, uh, can be, you know, take ha like 160 bits maybe, and certificates even, uh, you know, additional uh, factor. And if I replace them with identities, maybe this becomes uh, much lower, right? Uh, depending on, on the application. Okay. So that's the whole, that's the whole point of, of looking on an identity-based version of, of the stuff. As we know, you know, notion of identity-based signature is not very well defined. Uh, every signature is identity-based because I can just put identities in certificates. The point is that the whole public key certificate uh, overhead is now very tiny. Okay? It's just an identity. Okay. So what was known about these things and where do we fit in? Uh, there were two schemes, uh, one by Gentry Ramsan uh, in using elliptic curves, and then Bellar and Evan uh, under RSA. Uh, they, uh, I'm listing multi-signature case separately from the aggregate, general aggregate uh, case. Aggregate is in square brackets. So uh, the bilinear map uh, thing is shortest. Uh, they're all comparable to the underlying identity-based non-aggregate signature. Uh, they only have like 80 more bits. Ours has one more factor of 80 plus a little extra. Uh, and uh, basically our benefit is that we reduce the round complexity of the previous RSA solution. And uh, clearly the elliptic curve one, you know, is way better in terms of round complexity, but for the aggregate version, they still need something funny called like a synchronized unique token. 
So every time they sign, they need to assume that everybody shares this token. And this probably will, okay, at least in some applications, maybe creation of such a token essentially means one more uh, round of interaction. So for those applications, uh, it's really two rounds in both cases. Okay, and a different assumption. Um, oh, and a possibly faster uh, verification time. Okay, so in the remaining of the talk, uh, it will be uh, basically the rest will be more technical, and uh, I will I explain like where, so the basically uh, the multi signatures and aggregate signatures uh, they come from uh, aggregatable versions of the same zero knowledge proofs that underlie the signatures themselves. Okay, so we'll look at these kind of Yachamir like signatures. Uh, that were uh, appeared in the previous talk uh, already. Okay, and um, and to make this aggregatable zero knowledge proofs uh, that form multi signatures uh, to ha uh, get them with good uh, exact security, we need them to, these aggregatable zero knowledge proofs to have straight line simulation. So I will explain that, and I will explain the two tools that we use to achieve. Uh, this type of aggregatable, straight line simulatable uh, zero knowledge proofs. And uh, basically, we don't get full zero knowledge. We got something we call structured instance zero knowledge, which basically means that you can simulate, but only on certain kind of instances. And in order to get that, we, got, we used equivocable commitment. We actually, I guess, constructed an equivocable commitment uh, with some, with, uh, under some restrictions that are nevertheless good enough to simulate these zero knowledge proofs. Okay. So that would be the, uh, the uh, you know, the, the plan of the, of the technical part. Okay. Okay. So uh, let's see how these, uh, um, you know, where do aggregatable zero knowledge uh, proofs come from? Okay. So let's look at the proof of uh, possession of an ETH root, right? This is the source of the RSA based signature by Gilio and Quiscater. Um, so uh, the prover has an ETH root of a public key, which is the hash of its identity. This is in random oracles, or random oracle model. Um, what he does, he picks a random group element, uh, applies the RSA function to it, so then getting a challenge, replies with a linear combination of the pre-image of this public value and the pre-image of which is like a temporary public, temporary value created in the, in the proof and a permanent public value, okay? And now if you compute the function on this, on this point, you're going to get a combination of the temporary value and the permanent value shifted by this random challenge. And this is a, a proof of knowledge. If, you, if, adverse, if prover makes it, uh, uh, creates these kind of responses on random challenges, you can extract the underlying root. Uh, ETH root of this point. And how does simulation work? Um, uh, okay. Uh, you pick a random uh, Z uh, in a group, and for a random challenge, you can create this point because just by switching this to the other side, right, this is po uh, computable sort of in the forward direction given the response and the challenge. And say, if this is a non-interactive version of this kind of proof, uh, which forms the basis of, these, uh, of the Julio Kuskater signature, uh, you, all you need to do is to embed this challenge as a response of the hash function on uh, the point made of the public key and this uh, first message. Okay? Uh, so the full signature is this, this, this thing and, and the response were uh, to the uh, challenge computed by the hash function. Okay. Um, and now, why can we aggregate it? Well, because if you write, if, if many mm, provers perform this kind of proof uh, in parallel and somehow the challenge is the same on all these proofs, then by the uh, homomorphic properties of, 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 this, of this arithmetics, uh, if you uh, multiply all the first messages and multiply all the keys, and let's say that you create the challenge by hashing them in this, this way, and then you multiply the responses, but then you can see that if you multiply all these verification equations, 
uh, this verification equation will be will be met, and this is uh, the soundness argument is is, is 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 the same as as before. Okay, so I'm skipping the the soundness argument basically, um, but it's not it's not very com you know it's not complicated. So how would we simulate this? Okay. Well, maybe you. Uh, uh, okay, so let's say that you present one honest uh, party and everybody else is an uh, adversary. And so the simulator needs to perform the protocol on behalf of this one honest party. This is party P1. So let's, say, let's try to follow the same procedure. He picks uh, the response of this party, Z1. He picks this challenge, okay. Uh, he computes the first message of this party, just like before, in the single uh, prover case. But now, uh, embedding this challenge into the proper uh, hash function query is uh, not clear because the, both A, the first message in these proofs, and the, really the, in the statement under which all, all of these proofs are happening, which is the product of the public keys, they are, uh, they are not up to the simulator to decide on. So if the first player announces his A1 and his YI, all the others are created uh, perhaps uh, by, you know, by malicious players in any fashion they want. So it seems like the malicious players control these resulting values. And so the question is, uh, how can the simulator know which of these hash queries to embed the challenge into? Um, well, so one uh, kind of approach is uh, guess. You have in the in random Oracle model, there is uh, a limited number of hash queries adversary can make, efficient adversary can make. So if you guess, you will rewind, uh, uh, you know, for every time you guessed wrong, and this gives you at least this many rewindings per uh, signature protocol instance. And this idea uh, works, but there is a heavy security degradation. It's at least this many rewinding per instance, and maybe actually more. Um, and uh, you would get no, the scheme wouldn't be concurrently secure because you cannot rewind in, in parallel, uh, you know, concurrently many um, executed instances of, this, of this, such a scheme. Uh, and since it's a distributed scheme, it's kind of uh, not, uh, you know, it doesn't seem uh, nice uh, if, uh, you know, they have to agree on what instance they are, they are executing. Um, you couldn't pipeline this thing, uh, you know, it, so it wouldn't, uh, it doesn't seem satisfactory. Okay, so, um, so Belar and Evan, what they did in order to get uh, this uh, with, with good security and with uh, concurrent security, um, they say, okay, why don't we add one more round where every player commits uh, to these values using equivocable commitments implemented in ROM since we are in ROM already anyway, okay? So uh, this is an equivocable commitment in ROM uh, because these are random values and uh, uh, so a uh, simulator can publish like a random hash, uh, random, you know, uh, uh, strings and then extract the AIs from the adversary, compute this resulting product the way he likes uh, compute his, uh, therefore the challenge, the, the response, and compute his own uh, contribution uh, on, on the basis of, of, of that. So the simulation works fine, uh, but we have three rounds. Okay, so, um, so what we uh, propose is to replace this uh, equivocal commitment that requires one more round uh, by modifying the uh, proof system so that you combine equivocable commitments into this first round of the proof, okay? So, uh, the result is that, well, if it was a freestanding proof system, it would be a three-round proof. And uh, it's actually the same technique as used by Damgard to compile honest verifier zero knowledge to uh, general zero knowledge uh, using uh, equivocable commitments it's just that what we need here, which is special, is that we need these commitments to be not only equivocable, but they're so homomorphic. Because if everybody uh, uh, you know, submits this first message using an equivocal commitment, we still want to multiply all these commitments to get a commitment on the product of, of the A's. And similarly, with the commitments, we want to somehow 
Uh, and here, you know, I'm fast-forwarding, it will turn out to be a summation in, in, in case of our construction, uh, that there are some operations that combine these decommitments and form, form a decommitment to the combined commitment. Okay? So, uh, just like in Damkart's compilation, what, what Damkart gets uh, uh, using equivocal commitments in, in this fashion is not only zero knowledge, it's also concurrent zero knowledge, uh, and uh, particularly because it's a, the, there's a straight line simulator for it. And, uh, uh, okay, and, uh, what, and, and the resulting protocol has good exact security and it's concurrently secure. Um, there is uh, one, um, uh, actually, there's an alternative construction uh, that just uses witness indistinguishable proofs, which are also straight line simulatable and would get you the same exact security. The only uh, disadvantage of this approach is that, uh, as far as we could tell, uh, witness in this usual version of the ETH root uh, problem, uh, it seems the resulting construction has longer signatures and verification time and this, uh, than, than the one uh, we have here. Okay? Um, okay. So now, uh, what's there to do? Okay, so because this is equivocable only in quotation marks, we, what we, we don't exactly get to equivocable commitments, and, uh, and that's what I'm going to explain um, next. How much time do I have? Okay. Okay, so, um, so okay, so um, uh, in order to see what kind of, uh, okay, the reason we get, we only, uh, we have to do restricted equivocability is because we unfortunately don't know of any fully equivocable commitment scheme that would be homomorphic, multiplicatively homomorphic, okay? If we knew that, we would just use it, and that would be the end of the story right here, okay? Uh, but we don't know of such construction, and we didn't construct it uh, ourselves. Instead, we get a homomorphic commitment with the restricted form of equivocability. Here is the uh, no, uh, you know, nature of that restriction. So if you look at this uh, proof system and how they are simulated, the, from the simulator's point of view, the first message has this form. Okay? So the simulator picks a random element uh, in the group. This is the final response. Let's say random challenge. And forms this first message, the first message that we'll have to reveal will be of this form. Okay? So if you, if you transmit this message under commitment, this is the type of message that you will eventually have to equivoca equ equivocate to. Okay? You will have to open this trapdoor creator. If you are a simulator, you will create this commitment using a tra some trapdoor procedure, but this is the form of the message that you will be equivocating on. Okay, um, so, um, okay, so in other words, we only have to open messages that are of this form. And how are we doing it in the, uh, in the absence of having generally equivocable commitments? Well, we uh, are able to open such messages because we embed the public key of the challenge uh, into the trapdoor key of the commitment scheme. Okay. But this is a, a slight problem because that would mean that simulation would work only for a single statement Y, okay? Because uh, simulator knowing that he has to simulate for, say, first player, he sees his public key, he embeds this key into the trapdoor, even into the commitment scheme, and then he can simulate proofs on behalf of this first player. But this is not good enough for identity-based signatures. And why? Uh, because in identity-based signatures, all public keys are, or honest uh, players are related. So the simulator in the identity-based signature scheme uh, has to play on behalf of all honest people and uh, cannot pick their keys in an independent fashion and just run the simulation procedure sort of independently for every player. He has to have one simulation that succeeds on all uncorrupted players um, um, uh, in, in parallel. Okay, so that's what we call, um, but we don't know how to simulate this for every public key. We will simulate it nevertheless on a special type of public keys we call structured instance. Okay, here is how they are formed. Simulator giving a 
some uh, challenge to the uh, RSA problem, ethroot problem, forms the public keys of all players by shifting the challenge by random uh, vectors, where f is the RSA function. So this is delta to the e. And now, uh, if these are the pub public keys of all honest players, the forgery under any of these keys really implies forgery under this challenge. Okay, so that's why uh, this is this is uh, this um, forgery argument goes through. Now, what about simulation? So this means we call it structured instance if the simulator manages to simulate uh, uh, the proofs under all public keys formed in this fashion. Okay, so so there for the equivocation. Uh, now, th this is the message that you need to be convey for the Ys that are of this type. So this is the, technically uh, the form of the message that you will need to equivocate on. And here is a commitment scheme that achieves this, that allows such equivocation. K is another group element. Uh, the committed message is exponentiated to another prime. And uh, uh, the randomness in the commitment, the decommitment, is sort of curiously chosen in this group. Okay? And here, uh, technically, binding holds uh, as long as the decommitment is shorter than this, than this, uh, than this prime. Um, and it's uh, not easy to see. And here is the equivocation procedure. We uh, put embed the, this challenge into the, trap, into the commitment key. Uh, and uh, we form... Uh, uh, for every instance of the signature protocol, we form the commitment, the first message, trap, uh, so this is the trapdoor commitment procedure, by co taking this challenge and picking uh, yet another long enough uh, integer here. And, um, okay, so this, um, when you plug in the numbers, this is a, a, a message of this, of, the, of this type. What's important is that uh, E prime on both sides cancel, and uh, and this is satisfied as long as you find some decommitment and some second uh, and some response which satisfy this equation. And you can do that uh, if, if you make this power a multiple of E. So, uh, in other words, this integer is a multiple of E, so you compute D in this fashion to assure this equation. And once this equation is met, the response can be computed in this way, and if you plug this z in here, what you will see is that this is now a power of e, and because of this equation, there is an equality here. Okay, uh, th so that's the, that's the, you know, that, that's the kind of uh, non-intuitive thing. In the construction, why is this uh, the commitment uh, chosen in the subgroup? Well, it's because uh, this uh, equivocation procedure uh, you compute in the commitment uh, modulo E for sort of long enough random strings, S and R. So what is in the equivocation, D will be random mod E. So therefore, in the commitment, D is random mod E. Okay? And because we want to aggregate these things and we don't know the order of the group, so uh, if you remember, we need to aggregate both the commitments and the decommitments. But the decommitments are just short integers. So this is uh, going to be summation over integers and because the binding works only if this decommitment is shorter than in prime, we need, uh, the, um, we need um, and these are random numbers, these Ds are random numbers mod E, we need uh, their sum to be still smaller than E prime, where L is the maximum amount of uh, players in this multi-signature scheme. So this is the maximum amount of these decommitments that you're going to add over integers. And that was a question one reviewer asked, why is our E prime not the same as this E of the gulio uh, uh, signature scheme, and, and this is the, the answer. Okay. Okay. So uh, I conclude. Um, uh, so the contribution is the two-round aggregated signatures under RSA, and to, we have the structured instance uh, aggregatable proof construction as an alternative to witness instance and crucibility, uh, maybe there are some other uh, massive multi-party protocols where it would be a good idea to aggregate proof systems in this fashion. And some open questions relating to aggregate signatures. Well, can we have aggregate signatures with message recovery? Uh, Neven proposed such schemes. So can we uh, you know, reduce bandwidth even further by 
uh, you know, putting message bits into that aggregated signature. Okay, and that would be relevant if the messages are very, very small. Uh, and um, uh, and you know, and you are like uh, really uh, somehow need to reduce bandwidth. Um, another thing is that we still don't have uh, one round uh, aggregate signatures under any assumption, uh, and even in random oracles. Okay, and, and we don't have any aggregate signatures without random oracles, I mean any efficient ones. And the kind of uh, maybe interesting uh, application question is combining aggregation with forward security um, appears non-trivial and uh, that uh, 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 security, uh, after talking to some security person, you know, I realized that this might be an interesting problem for s uh, sensor networks. You have sensors that keep on signing some uh, messages, some you know measurements that they take every ten minutes, and update their keys so that if somebody corrupts the sensor, they cannot backdate these signatures. Right? The, 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 the key got forwarded. But in this application, in rather than having a massive amount of signatures every ten minutes, I create, the sensor creates a new signature. Why don't they aggregate them at the same time? Uh, we don't seem to have a construction construction like this. So this appears like a kind of maybe cool uh, open question. Thanks. <laughs>